God for this awesome praise team and these musicians. Come on, let's just give God praise and thanksgiving. Amen. 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 And thank God for all of you who chose to be here tonight. Know that your coming is not in vain, for God has great recompense of reward. Did you hear me? God has great recompense of reward. He rewards our diligence in seeking him. He cares enough to respond to us. He's never, ever going to have it where we came to sit at his feet and didn't receive anything. And we can receive as much as we place a demand on, as much as we open up our hearts to, as much as we want. Amen? Amen. It's, 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 like it's kind of like a buffet. You just eat till you get full. Amen? So the, your, the appetite that you come with is going to have a lot to do with what you leave with. Amen? And so since we're here, we just want to release our faith in agreement with one another for revelation and utterance, for the flow of God's spirit, for answers from heaven. Amen? And we're listening with the intent and the resolve to live in obedience and service to God by what we hear. Amen? That way he's glorified, his will is done in the earth for others as well as ourselves. Amen? Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. So let's, uh, let's open our Bibles tonight to Romans, uh, the fifth chapter, Romans chapter five. And I believe I'm going to continue with part two of understanding our place of dominion. Understanding our place of dominion. And how many understand that our position in Christ uh, as his righteousness, right? Uh, our place of right standing is a place of dominion. How many understand that? Amen. I mean, we, we, we understand that that's, that's scriptural, that our position, our place of right standing with God, our place of acceptance by God is our place of dominion, right? Um, because th God needs the church uh, to take her rightful place. Um, corporately, universally, and individually. Uh, as a local assembly, but each one of us, are the, we, we are the church. And, and he needs each of us to understand our place of dominion so that we can operate accordingly, amen? Uh, do you remember in Genesis chapter 3, uh, I think it's around verse 8 and 9, uh, Adam and Eve had sinned and eaten the fruit that they wasn't supposed to eat, and they heard the voice of God walking in the wilderness, right? And uh, the Bible says that God called out to Adam saying, where are you? Where are you? Now, how many of you know that when God asks a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer? So when he says, Adam, where are you, right? Uh, he's communicating to Adam. Uh, and for us, for our benefit even today, uh, he's, he's, he's acknowledging that Adam was out of place. He knew exactly where Adam was but he's acknowledging that Adam was out of place. He was out of his intended place, out of his assigned place of dominion. Because originally he had been given dominion over all the works of God's hand. And so he had a responsibility to fulfill that mandate of having dominion. But, but as a result of sinning, uh, he lost his place of dominion and authority. He failed from that place. Uh, because of sin and, and, and with him, in him, the family of man. And so, so as a result of his sin, he was out of place, right? So, so, so <clears throat> I think, I, I sense uh, that, that, that God is, that, that, that's still the, the, God still is trying to wake the church up to the fact that uh, positionally, we're in Christ, in Christ, 
and, and in right standing. Positionally, we do have a place of dominion, but in terms of our understanding, we're out of place. Right? And so not only is God, uh, as he was asking Adam, where are you? But all of creation is now asking, where, are, where, where is the church? It, it, Bible, the Bible says, I think it's in Romans 8, around verse 19 or something, all of creation is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God, right? It's, it, in other words, it's, it's, it's waiting all of creation. Understand now, all of creation originally was under the authority and, and the dominion of Adam. It was under Adam's domain. It was Adam's responsibility to, to govern and influence, to rule and to reign over the earth, right? So through his sin, right, everything under his domain became perverted and distorted. It became something he never intended. So all of creation is yet waiting for, for the sons of God to assume their rightful place of dominion. Now understand, because we're in Christ, because we have right standing with God, we, we, we occupy a place of dominion, but if our understanding is such, if we don't understand that, we can't function in dominion. We can't operate in dominion. Are you understand what I'm saying? And, and there are aspects of creation that is still awaiting the, the sons of God to take their rightful place of dominion and begin to reign and to rule. Why? Because, because there are aspects of creation that cannot be restored until the church takes her place. There are households, there are communities, there are cities, there, 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 there are people, places that are yet out of order in disarray because of the effects of the curse and, and, and God has assigned it as a territory to various aspects of his body to have dominion over it so that there can be restoration in those places. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Yeah. Even on our, on our jobs and our workforce, even in the community, at, at, at Walmart, at, at, at Kroger's, at the, wherever you happen to be, we have to recognize that wherever we are in our everyday life and our everyday affairs, that's our world that we've been commanded to go into with the gospel, to manifest the kingdom, to bring order, to have dominion. Are y'all following what I'm saying? And so, so a lot of times we go into places and, and, into, and we're acceptable of conditions even though positionally speaking we have dominion over it, but because we don't understand it and we don't see ourselves as having dominion, over it, we conform to it. We comply with it. We are accepting. We allow every external situation and condition to have a say in our lives. And, 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 and we're the ones that have been giving final say over our lives. Are y'all following what I'm saying? And, and so we gotta, we have to realize that as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, we're, we're, no, we're not slaves, we're sons who serve, but we're, but, but, but we're, not, we're not under duress. God is not pressuring us or making us serve, right? We're sons who of our own free will and volition choose to serve our Father. Amen? So we got to recognize that we're in the care of our Father, but we're in the service of our Father and live in submission to him, to what he's revealed to us as his will and as his ways, right? I read something uh, earlier today or yesterday, well, yesterday and today, actually, and, and I, I liked it. It was, it. it was along these lines. The very simple key to experiencing the supernatural blessings of God in our lives is just to do things his way and not our own. That, that, that's the very simple key to walking with God, experiencing God's power and provision in our lives. The, 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 that's the simplest way you can put it. Just make a decision to trust God with your life, to do things his way and not our own. That's how we walk together with God in fellowship and communion by doing things his way with him at the head leading and guiding us and us arm in arm walking along with him, accompanying him with the same heart, with the same motive. 
Are y'all following me? So there's got to be a, a, a realization on our part that his way is the best way. It's not a way, it's the way, right? And, 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 and Satan will offer an alternative, another way that seems reasonable, that offers a degree of comfort and familiarity that makes sense. And it'll seem right to the carnal mind, but the end thereof is death and destruction. Are y'all following what I'm saying? <clears throat> so, have you found Romans 5? <clears throat> Uh, let me just read, let me begin at verse 17. Um, Romans 5, verse 17, and I'm going to read it, I'm just going to go straight to the, to the Amplified Classic uh, for the sake of time here. Uh, for if because of one man's trespass, lapse, or offense, because of that, death reigned through that one. Now, if that happened, much more surely Will those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself. Every one of us has received the free gift of righteousness, putting us into right standing with God himself. Every one of us have right standing with God. We, we are in right standing with God. In other words, in other words, if, 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 if God was checking a ledger and came across your name, he would put check, right standing. In other words, everything's okay. There's, there, I have no ought against them. I find no wrong with them. I, he, he, see, see, that right standing with him means because of the blood of Jesus, our faith in that blood, it has been sufficient payment for everything we owe. And he's marked the ledger paid in full. No, I find no wrong, no sin, no all. Everything's right. We have right standing with him. And as a result of receiving the, the abundance of his grace and the free gift of righteousness, putting us into right standing with himself, that is a place of dominion from which we reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Now, Christ means the anointed one, and it also refers to his anointed. He is the Messiah. So our right standing with God, our acceptance by God, positions us to rule and to reign as kings through Jesus, the anointed one, and his anointing as a king. Say, I'm a king. Glory to God. Now, keep that in mind because we're going we gonna to get back to that. We're going to get back to that. Now, let, let me back up. I want to read verses 12 through 17, but I'm going to read it in the, in the contemporary English version because I just think it's it just plainer and easier to understand. So I'm going to read from verses 12 through 17 in the, in the CEV, right? And this will point out because, see, it, it, this, this will show us that the position of dominion we had, the place of dominion we had in Adam before he sinned, right? We lost through his sin, but the last Adam came and did not sin, and as a result of not sinning and we being risen together with him, we are back in the original place of dominion in the last Adam. So everything that, was, that, 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 that God intended for Adam to walk in and he lost, Jesus got back, and, we're, and, and, we, and we got it back. Are y'all following? Amen. All right. So, 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 so you can follow along in your King James if you want, but I'm, I'm, I'm just going to read this from the, the contemporary English version, verse 12. It says, Adam sinned, and that sin brought death into the world. Now, everyone has sinned, and so everyone must die. Sin was in the world before the law came, but no record of sin was kept, because there was no law. Yet death still had power over all who lived from the time of Adam to the time of Moses. This happened, though not everyone disobeyed a direct command from God as Adam did. In some ways, Adam is like Christ who came later. But the gift of God's undeserved grace was very different from Adam's sin. That one sin brought death to many others. 
Yet in an even greater way, Jesus Christ alone brought God's gift of undeserved grace to many people. There is a lot of difference between Adam's sin and God's gift. That one sin led to punishment, but God's gift made it possible for, for us to be acceptable to him, even though we have sinned many times. Death ruled like a king because Adam had sinned. But that cannot compare with what Jesus Christ has done. God has treated us with undeserved grace, and he has accepted us because of Jesus. And so we live and rule like kings. Glory to God. We are to rule, we are to reign as kings per our acceptance by God in Christ Jesus per our right standing with God. We're in a place of dominion over all the works of God's hands. We're in a place of dominion over all of creation. You and I have a, a place of dominion over all principality, power, dominion, and might. Over every name, every spirit, everything that would present itself with having some authority. It's a lie, but it tries to come off as having it, whether it's in this world or the world to come. Jesus took all the authority there was and delegated it to us. We have all authority. Which means Satan has no authority. Now he has ability. He has power, ability. But he has no authority. Our authority gives us command of all God's ability. Our place of dominion allows us to exercise authority, to rule, to reign, to, 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 to exercise governing influence as a king in this life. And how do we do it? We do it through Jesus, the anointed one, and by his anointing. Well, how do we do that? How, do, how is it that we rule and reign as a king through the anointed one, Jesus, and his anointing? Well, we do it the same way Jesus did. We do it the same way Jesus did. I, yeah, I'll take the time to look at it. Because I referenced this Sunday. Look at it real quick. John 14. John 14. We reign and rule as kings through Jesus the same way Jesus reigned and ruled as a king through the Father. John 14, are you there? If you look at verse 10, right? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. So it was the, he's acknowledging, hey, I don't come up with my own stuff to say. The words that I speak are given me by the Father who dwells within me. And upon me speaking the words that the Father gives me, he in turn now doeth the work of those words. He brings those words that I speak on his behalf to pass. He doeth the works. So in other words, everything you read about Jesus in the gospel, everything he did, all of those works, all of those mighty works and things of that nature, it happened as a result of him hearing and obeying what God said. And as a result, God in him, through him, did perform the working of it. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So God was able to legally manifest himself in the earth through Jesus, per Jesus' obedience to him in saying and doing what he heard and saw from the Father. So Jesus reigned as a king, right? By hearing and acting on the Father's word. You follow me? Now, in the same way, we reign as kings by hearing and acting on the Son's words, the, our Lord's words, right? Y'all follow me? So, so, so look at verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, Jesus is saying, who that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. You're going to do the same works I did. Well, how did he do the works he did? He listened to and heard what the Father said and obeyed. Well, he's saying if we believe on him, we'll do the same works he did. Right? Well, how are we going to do the works he did? We got to do it the same way he did it. We got to listen to him, hear what he says, see what he does, and act accordingly. Right? That's what he said, right? He said, he that believeth on me, 
the works that I do shall he do also, and greater than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. My going to the Father is going to make greater than these available and possible because of the work I'm going to do to get to the Father. He says, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, you run the reference on that word Greek, it's not a petition, and he's not saying whatever you ask me. He's saying whatever you ask, whatever you place a demand on by virtue of covenant, whatever you command in my name, he says, I, that will I do. I'm going to perform it. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. In other words, whatever you command to be, to happen in my name, I'm going to perform and bring to pass what you commanded to happen. I'm going to do it. But, he's, but, but notice he can't do what we don't command. He says, if you shall ask anything in my name, if you shall command anything in my name, if you shall place a demand on, by virtue of covenant, anything in my name, I will do it. Why? That the Father be glorified in the Son. You and I are also sons of God. So that the Father be glorified in each of us as sons of God. He will perform and bring to fruition whatever command we issue in his name. It's, it's, it's just like, how, how many of y'all have ever been in a super, uh, in, in a position of supervision? You had people working under you, as, as well as having people working over you. You got to answer to somebody, but you got some people that got to answer to you. Well, to some degree, you have some liberty to, to, to make the call over the area you're responsible for, and those working under you have to, have to adhere to what you say because they're subject to your authority. But every now and then, there might be something you don't know what the call is made or it's outside you, the scope of your authority, so you got to go to who's in charge of you. And now once you hear from them what they are saying, you now come and share with those under you what they are saying they're hearing you say it. They didn't, hear the, they didn't hear the top man say it. They heard you say it. But they're responding just like they heard the top man because it's his word. Are y'all following what I'm saying? And so, 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 so the Father has planted us here in the earth as the kingdom. You know, the Bible says the kingdom is, is, is like, is like uh, that seed when it's sown, it's the least. But then when it grows up, uh, it, 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 is, it grows up and, 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 and produces greater than all of them. You are that seed. You, the church, we, the church, be the seed that has been planted in the earth. He has, he has sown the kingdom. He has sown the reality of his government and his rule in the earth, in the body of the church as a seed. And as we come to know him and become more intimate and personally acquainted with him and mature in him, we grow. We, and as we grow in understanding, we grow, in our, we grow in, our, in our understanding, we operate in greater levels and measures of dominion. And through us, the church, he's able to manifest himself in the earth on the, on the level of that which we have commanded to be what we got from him. Y'all get what I'm saying? Are y'all hearing me? All right, so, so we reign then as kings through Jesus by walking in communion and fellowship with Jesus, hearing, listening, obeying what we get from Jesus, saying and acting accordingly, who in turn is legally able to manifest himself, to perform the work of the command we gave. Pain, go in Jesus' name. Jesus is able to perform the work of pain going. Be healed in Jesus' name. That, those words, that commandment now licenses him to perform the work of healing. Money cometh in Jesus' name. That prophetic declaration, that command in his name releases him to perform the working of that. Are y'all following what I'm saying? 
a spirit of rebellion. I bind you in Jesus' name. I bind the, 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 the operation of the enemy in my life, in Jesus' name. Satan, I bind you and your operations in my household, in Jesus' name. I bind you and your operations in my finances, in Jesus' name. So the Father, through those words, is now able to perform that which we commanded in the name of Jesus. And what's happening? We're ruling, we're reigning. We're, we're exercising dominion. We're dominating over everything God has put under our hand through our submission to his dominion and authority over us. Because we're not going in there just coming up with our own stuff to say. We're getting it from the, from, from the Father who was in Jesus, who was in us. Are y'all following me? But now, go, go, back, go back to Romans 5. So, we reign as kings. Kings in life, in this life. Right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, now we, we, we referenced this, but we didn't look at it. Go to Job 22. How does a king reign? How does a king reign? Right? You found Job 22? Job 22, look at verse 28. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. The Amplified says, you shall also decide and decree a thing, and it shall be established for you, and the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. You shall decree a thing. Kings rule, they reign, they exercise, they rule and reign over their domain by issuing the decree that serves their interests. Right? Now, who in the, who, who's going to, who, who's it says that, it says shall decree a thing? We shall decree a thing. So, so, first of all, let's, let's just receive that. Let's wrap our minds around that. Anything that's going to happen in the earth that God intends for the earth is not going to happen by God decreeing it. It's going to happen by us decreeing it. You remember, in, what is it, Ezekiel 37? When he asked Zeke, he said, hey, can these bones live? Well, you know, Lord. Well, did they live? They came to life, right? But what had to happen before they came to life? Ezekiel had to prophesy to him. He had to say to him what he got from God. And him saying what he got from God came, took on the form of a decree. And it became established. And it was manifested and tangible in the earth. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So, so too often we find ourselves in unpleasant, evil conditions and circumstances bound contained, restricted, confined, hindered, uh, and we're crying out to God to do something about it. But the problem with that is we're approaching him as though he hadn't done anything about it. And because he has done something about it already, the conditions are not going to change because there's nothing left for him to do because it's already done. So our conditions are not going to change by trying to get God to do something you've already done. The thing that's going to change our condition is us coming into the knowledge through communion with God, what he has already done, and then getting to agreement with him and receiving it, and then lining up our speech with what he's already done. Lining up our beliefs, our value system, our practices, our everyday life with what he's revealed to us, with what he's done, with what he's saying. Right? And then as we command, as we issue the decree, right, then what's done is established. 
It's established. Are y'all following me? Now, <clears throat> let me, let, let, let's look at this word decree, man, because this is, this is a powerful word. We, we've talked about it some, but we'll, we'll look at it. The, the definition of the word decree, it means to determine or resolve legislatively. To determine the end result, to resolve legislatively. In other words, we're going to handle it legislatively. We're going to resolve the problem. We're going to determine the end result, the answer. This is, going to, this is done legislatively, right? It also means to fix or appoint. To fix or appoint. It means to set or constitute by edict or on purpose. I didn't know exactly what the word edict means, so I looked that word up. Edict means this, that which is uttered or proclaimed by authority as a rule of action. It's that which is uttered or proclaimed by authority as a rule of action, and it requires obedience. Right? So the decree then, it, 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 as it said this way, it means to, to determine or resolve, to determine the outcome, to resolve the issue legislative, legislatively, right? Uh, to set or constitute as a result of what we utter or proclaim that must be obeyed. See, as a king, when you decree a thing, the, thi the, the thing you decree is established and, and, and no nothing and no one can, can come to you and say, hey, what you doing? Like, like for example, you, you, you've seen somebody may just take some liberties that they don't have. You'd be like, hey, man, what do you think you're doing? You're, what are you doing? You're questioning their authority. You're, you, 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 in other words, you're making light of their authority. You're refusing to recognize their authority because you buck and say, hey, what you doing? But when, but, but when a decree is made, nobody can do that. You, you can't question that. You can't come asking, hey, what, what, what about this? See, Ecclesiastes 8 and 4 says, where the word of a king is, there's power, there's authority, and no one can question it. So, so, the word, so in your word as a king in Christ Jesus, nothing can question your decree. In other words, Satan cannot fail to acknowledge your authority and say, what's up? No, he, he recognizes your authority and bows his knee in submission. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Now look, thou shalt decree a thing. So here, here's a, a, a statement uh, that goes with Ecclesiastes 8 and 4, where the word of a, of a king is. The word of a king. Just look at Ecclesiastes. You're right there. Go to, go to a couple of pages to you. To your right, a few books over to your right. Ecclesiastes 8 and 4. You there? Where the word of a king is, there is power, authority. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? The Amplified says, where the word of a king is authority and power. And who may say to him, what are you doing? See, it's, it's this authority, where the word of a king is authority, this authority releases the power and ability of God. Uh, to supersede whatever's going wrong. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Now, now, everybody, may, everybody, everybody agree with that. You see it in the book where the word of a king is right there is authority, right? Right? Now, how many know Jesus is the king of kings? We're the kings that he's king of. And we've been given authority and dominion to rule as king. And where the word of a king is, there is authority that the enemy, that creation cannot question, right? So, so, so say this, say, I'm a king in Christ Jesus. Where my word is, there's authority. See, you got to realize, say, say this with Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I walk in authority that the enemy cannot question. Now, he won't question your authority. He'll question whether or not you know you're in authority. But if you know you're in authority, he can't question it. He tries to get us to question whether or not we actually have it. But so, so you got to see then where the word of a king is, there's authority. You got to understand where your word is, there's authority. When you decree a thing that, that, that God is giving you concerning your situation, then the words used to release that decree, there is authority. Your words carry power, authority. Are you following me? Hallelujah. So, so here's my statement. When we decree and declare according to God's word, we are operating from a place of dominion and authority that all of creation must adjust to. When we decree and declare God's word, when we decree and declare according to God's word, right, we're operating uh, in a place of dominion and authority that all of creation must adjust to. Your finances must adjust to money coming. If we're honoring God with our money. You what was that? Your body and whatever is trying to work against your body must adjust to health be. I am healed, pain go. All the, the, the entities, spiritual entities that work against you where your marriage is concerned, your relationships are concerned, your family is concerned, must bow their knee and adjust themselves to the words you speak and decree concerning your marriage, your household, your relationships, your children. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Why? Because, because your word, your word has been released. And where your word is, there's authority. When your words line up with God's words, your words carry authority that all of creation must adjust to. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, Jesus, help me. Look at Mark, Mark chapter 11. And you may as well uh, put your ribbon on Mark chapter 5. But let's go to Mark chapter 11. And I just, well, I'm going I'm to just touch on this briefly so we can get over to Mark 5. But Mark 11, verses 22 through 24. Jesus answering, saying unto them, have faith in God. Right? Now we understand cross references have the God kind of faith or the God kind of faith. The subject in this verse, the understood subject is you. Jesus is saying you. He's responding to Peter's explanation, acknowledgement of the tree dried up from its roots. And, and, and so he's responding to that and he's saying you have or put to work the faith, put, put to work your faith the same way God puts his faith to work, right? Have faith in God. Have, apply, put it to work, right? Right? Y'all got me? Mark chapter 11, verse 22, have faith in God, is the equivalent of Genesis chapter 1. When God said, light be, and there was light, God exercised his faith by saying what he desired, believing in his heart that what he said would come to pass, and as a result, he had what he said. And Jesus is expounding on that right here, beginning at verse 22, verse 23, and 24. He says, for I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, and the mountain is anything opposing you and the will of God for your life, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Sometimes we have doubt in the mind, but don't doubt in the core of your being. But shall believe. Believe, believe in your heart that what things soever you say shall come to pass. 
he shall have what he said. Now, he's expounding on how to have faith in God or how to have or apply the faith of God, the God kind of faith. That's, just, that's exactly what God did in Genesis chapter 1. Are y'all following me? He said what he said. He believed that he would have what he said. And as a result, he had what he said. And he's saying that we are to apply our faith in the same way by saying, believing in our heart that what we say shall come to pass. And as a result, we'll have what we say. So what do we say to? What do we speak to? What do you say speak to? Whosoever shall say unto this mountain. What is a mountain? A mountain is anything manifesting in our lives that's contrary to the word of God, the will of God, the ways of God, anything that would oppose the will of God and us in the will of God. That's a mountain. So the end result is that the mountain be removed, right? But not once did he say, whoever says to God, deal with this mountain, the mountain to be removed. He says, no, whoever spares to the mountain, be thou removed. Believing in your heart that what you say is going to come to pass. You'll have what you say, the mountain to be removed. That's dominion. He's illustrating dominion, our place of dominion. When you can, when you can encounter a situation and speak to it, commanding it to be what you want it to be, and it become that, that's the that's dominion. And our right standing with God and our acceptance of God is our place of dominion from which we operate from. That allows us to rule and to reign as kings. We go to God about the mountain, about the problem, about the situation, and we let God talk to us about it and tell us what to say. Then we speak to it. We act in obedience to what we got from the Father, issuing the command, the decree, and the Father doeth the work. So what, by whatever work of entity, the mountain is there. When you speak, being that your words are the words of a king and have authority, there's a great, the, 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 the authority of your words overrules and overrides the working of darkness that caused that mountain to be there. Y'all follow what I'm saying? He says, because of that, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. What do you do concerning what you desire when you pray? Believe you receive them. When you believe you receive them. When you pray. Right? And by believing you receive what you want when you pray, what happens? You will have it. But to have it, you got to believe you receive it when you pray. No, you, you can't believe you got it when it show up. You got to believe it was granted at the time you prayed. That you received it when you prayed. So, so, so let me see. I think I got a note here. There is a translation. Where is it? That reads, that says it this way. If I'm not mistaken, this is the translator's New Testament. It says, if anyone says to this mountain, be carried away and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he, that, but, but believes that what he says is happening, then it will happen for him. In other words, you, you, you believe that what you say is happening as you say it. And as a result, you have what you say. With the same way, you believe whatever you desire is happening at the time you pray. Believe you receive the thing you desire at the time you pray and make a demand on it. Believe that it's granted. Believe that it's done. So by the time you finish praying and say amen, you got it. Now, it may or may not have manifested that quickly, but because you believe you've received it when you pray, he said, do that and you'll have it. Well, did I, did I do it? Then I have it. Well, if I have it, it can't help but manifest as long as I remain in faith and not fear. As long as I remain in love and not strife. 
See, the only reason to get in strife is fear. Fear is the only reason to get in strife. Fear of what will be if I don't. So we enter into strife. But for my faith to work, I got I to gotta stay in it. I got to walk in love, right? All right. Go to Mark 5. Now remember, death entered the world as a result of Adam's sin, and from the point of its entry, ruled and reigned like a king over all mankind until Jesus came and redeemed us out from under Satan's purchase, or purchased us out from under Satan's hand, delivered us from his hand, from his bondage, from his, from his kingdom. And in redeeming us, he restored us. He restored us back to a place of dominion. So now, we who have received the abundance of his grace and the free gift of righteousness, we reign as kings as opposed to death reigning over us. Yeah. Death no longer reigns over us, we reign over it. Death is anything manifesting in our lives that separates us or keeps us from what God intended, the good he intended. Sickness is a form of death because it separates us from health. Amen. Abundance is a form of death because it's, it, I mean, uh, lack is a form of death because it separates us from abundance. Right? Despondency and discouragement and disdain and all of those are forms and aspects of death that, that separate us from peace, fulfillment, contentment, and joy. So we ought not allow fear and, and the pressure imposed upon our minds, to, 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 which is a form of death. They, they don't reign anymore. Why? Because we're in right standing with God. We're no longer, we no longer belong to Satan. We're no longer under the power of darkness. We're in a completely different kingdom with a, pre, with a completely different ruler. And he's in us giving us what to say and what to do. And our obedience in saying it, in decreeing it, in commanding it, Releases him to perform it. Y'all follow me? So death no longer reigns. Say I reign. In, as a king in this life. Now, now, now let, let's, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Mark 5. Beginning at verse 21. And, and I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it. Just for the sake of time. But this is when you know. Jesus had got back from coming across the sea. Uh, verse 22 says, Behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. When he saw him, he fell at his feet, and he besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, Jesus, come, lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Now the prayer, the petition, the demand, the request, whatever you want to call it, that ended with healed. Now, she shall live is a decree. He, he, he came and besought him greatly, worshiping him, uh, begging him earnestly, come, look, my daughter's about to die. She's at the point of death. Come lay your hands on her. She'll be healed, and she shall live. Right? Next verse, what happens? And Jesus went with him. Jesus is the anointed one, right? Right? He's anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, right? So if Jesus responded to his faith, to his decree, then the anointing is now working to establish what he desires. Because Jesus went with him, right? Jesus is carrying the anointing, right? The anointing is now at work on his behalf. It's en route to his house, right? So when you decree a thing, the moment you decree it, the anointing, is released to affect it, to establish it. Right? Because the where the word of a king is, there, author there is authority. That authority releases, it authorizes the anointing, the power and the ability of God to go to work. It's really under our command. God's power and ability is under our command. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what, we remember Peter and, 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 and John? Lame man, I ain't got no money for you right now, but what I got? I'll give it to you in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. And immediately he received strength and got up, leaping and praising God, right? 
the power necessary to get him up was under Peter's command and it was released with the words, with the command in Jesus' name. Are y'all following what I'm saying? All right. So we know what happened. That whole situation was interrupted with that woman who came and got her healing, got her delivered, right? And during the process of hearing her testimony, right, Jesus is telling her in verse 34, daughter, your faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spoke, verse 35, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. I like Luke chapter 8, verse 50. It says, fear not, believe only. You, you got to understand what's happening. Jesus is listening to this woman's testimony. He's telling her, your faith has made you whole. While he's saying it, he overhears somebody that came from the ruler's house telling you, your girl is dead, don't worry about it, don't trouble the God. And immediately, see the anointing is still at work. Immediately, fear not, believe only. And she shall be made whole. And see, here's what we got to understand. And I think this is a statement I have too. God's power will meet you at the point of your decree. God's power will meet you at the point of your decree. It will serve you at the point of your decree. Right? Now listen, listen. The anointing was working, right? Because Jesus was following him home, right? Right? There was an interruption. During the interruption, the situation appeared to get worse because now she ain't at the point of death. She done died. But remember, J. Iris' declaration was, she shall live. So the anointing was still working to that end. It'll meet you at the point of your decree. In other words, the fact that Jesus overheard it and, in and commanded Jairus, don't be afraid, believe only, that's the power still at work. Even though the situation appeared to have gotten worse. Right? God's power will meet you at the point of your decree. Now listen, God's power does not stop working just because it looks like it got worse. The only time God's power stops working is if your faith stops working. It doesn't stop working. God's power has not stopped working just because what you believe you received hadn't shown up yet. Just because it may look and feel like it got worse than ever before because you believe you received when you prayed, because you believe you, said, you had it when you said it, God's power still working to that end. At the point of your decree, even in the face of contradictory circumstances. And will continue to work as long as you stay in faith. It won't stop working unless your faith stops. You got to keep the switch of faith turned on. How do you do that? By not getting caught up and preoccupied with how bad it looks. Give your time and attention and consideration to the word of God. What did God say to you and minister to you that brought the faith to believe in the first place? Well, go back. He still said the same thing. That word didn't change. That word still said, by his stripes you're healed. That word still says, I'm your shepherd, you shall not walk. Whatever fueled your faith to begin the process of appropriating what you want, go back and feed on it. Feed on it, act on it, walk it out. And God will sustain you. He'll help you along the way. When you need, when you need a check, right? When you need to get straight now, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh, 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 uh. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't get caught up in that. Keep believing me. Keep trusting me. The Spirit of God will guide you and direct you along the way. Y'all follow me? But we got to honor him and yield to him and continue to do it his way and not our way. We can't abort the faith, pro the, the process, the kingdom process of receiving because it looks and feels like it ain't working. We can't allow 
the pressure of the situation to change our confession, to abort our faith, to begin to decree something differently. Y'all follow me? God's power will meet you at the point of your decree. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So what happens when they get there, they arrive, they got the, you know, the professional mourners there. People done heard and they didn't come, brought the, you know, tater salad, whatever they're going to bring, and crying and carrying on and mourning and weeping. Oh, Lord, you know. Y'all know. Hmm. But see, in, in, in moments like that, uh, what, what weight does God's word carry with you? Or, or what weight does the situation carry, right? I mean, the, the, the weight, the, the words of friends and family carry more weight than the word of the Lord. Because see, in that moment, notice when they got there, Jesus only let, took the mom and the daddy and, and, and Peter and John, 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 uh, James and him, Peter, James, and John, right? And uh, put everybody else out. But notice, he shows up and says, what y'all crying for? She ain't dead, she just sleep. Well, Jairus had authorized the anointing to work. He was authorized by Jairus to, to decree that, to say that. Because Jairus feared not and continued to believe the anointing continued to work. The anointing released in she shall live was continually at work. So Jesus, Jesus, uh-uh, she's not dead, she just sleep. Now, a lot of times, man, you say something so blatantly contradictory to present circumstances and conditions in the presence of family and loved ones, they're going to look at you like you're tripping. They're going to they mess with you, man. I, I, they'll, 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 they'll call you out the name, talk about you, talk, talk about you, talk about your church, talk about your pastor. Because it's so different. It's so, so unlike what our senses tell us. But the question is, is it aligned with the, with the word? And see, so sometimes, you, you know, you, 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 you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you, you, you gotta, if, if they can't believe with you, Exit right. Exit left. My right, your left. If they can't get on board with the vision, don't even waste time sharing it. Everybody is not in a place where they can agree with you. You got to be sensitive to the Spirit of God as to who, who is and who can. Are you following what I'm saying? Because remember, the decree was, and she shall live. So God's power is still working to that, to that point, to the point of that decree. So, so, so now when Jesus speaks, she's just sleeping, then the spirit of death is gone. Amen. Now he gets in there, he takes her by the hand, tell her that kumi, uh, damsel I say to you, arise. And she gets up. She gets up. Dominion. Death could not continue to reign. Why? Because a, because the word of a king had been spoken. And we're that king in Christ Jesus. Where our word is, is authority. That everything has to adjust itself to. Are you following what I'm saying? Oh God, let, uh, I'll, let, me just, I'll, let me just read this statement to you and I'll let you go. We'll just not deal with the rest of this. Um, 
let me just skip to the end with this last statement. And this is based on John 8, 31 and 32, where Jesus told those Jews that believe, continue in my word, right? And, and, and uh, you'll be my disciples indeed. You should know the truth. You'll be my disciples indeed. The truth, you know, it'll make you free, right? So here's my last statement. The key to experiencing breakthrough is consistency. We must persevere in the word giving it first place in our lives and acting on it as final authority. John 8, verse 37, Jesus said, I know you're Abraham's seed, but y'all trying to kill me. And the only reason is because my word has no place in you. We got to give God's word first place. We got to receive it and act on it as final authority. We got to persevere in the word, continually yield and give it first place. Amen. Continually look to the Lord for what he has to say. Continue to receive it and exalt it as final authority and govern your life by it. Persevere in the word. Consistency in going to the word and acting on the word. Consistency is the key to your breakthrough. Uh, Deacon Johnny can tell you that about exercise and working out. The key is consistency. Right? You can go out and have a very intense workout for two hours and don't work out again for three weeks. Well, but at the same time, you can do 20 minutes, three days a week. That consistency will give, make, will give you greater, greater breakthrough than that, that two hours of intense that you didn't do. No, just 20, 20 10 minutes. You know. Consistency. Consistently give the word place. Consistently submit to this final authority. And you will see breakthrough. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Glory to God. Father, we thank you tonight for your word, the unfolding of your word, Lord. We just thank you and praise you, Lord, for enlightenment and understanding tonight. 